Hi everyone and welcome back to NTE. Uh, today's video was inspired by another creator. So I stumbled upon this lovely little channel on YouTube by the name of Mathanatics, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. And he has a revision series that he's currently running. This one specific question just struck my eye. As he was solving it, I had my own little two cents about how I would approach it. So I just quickly wanted to share. Right. Uh, not to say that the way that he solved it is wrong in any way. It is absolutely not. I was also just thinking to myself, hmm, quite interesting. Uh, I can think of another way that we can approach this. Right. So the question that he was doing is currently on screen and it falls under the section of solving equations with fractions. Or some of you might be familiar with the title uh, solving equations using a suitable substitution or even the K method. Right. So this is a type of question that will most likely be given to grade 11 learners. And really the objective here is to find within the equation, right, certain expressions that are similar to each other, right? So within the equation, find something that is the same, okay? And then what we do is we replace that thing with the letter K, right? We've just decided upon the letter K. Doesn't really matter. You could call it P or T, M, whatever floats your boat, okay? But so far, we've just stuck to the letter K, right? That's the K method. Right, so if you're interested in how uh, Mathematics does this uh, question, I will link it at the end. I just quickly want to share how I would approach it, okay? So when I was looking at this question, I was thinking, ah, very interesting question. How about we make a substitution for this entire quadratic, Okay, so for 2x squared minus x minus 1, okay? So in other words, make this quadratic show up over here, right? I mean, it is actually quite close. It is possible to make it show up, so why not, okay? So if you're going to have to make 2x squared minus x minus 1 show up over here, you could do it like this, right? So you would say 2x squared minus an x minus 1, and then plus. Then for your fraction, you have 15 divided by, okay? Now you'll get 2x squared minus an x. Now look at this, minus 1 plus 3, okay? Now I haven't done anything radical there or incorrect. All that I've done is that I've rewritten the positive 2 as a minus 1 plus 3. Okay, so now can you see we can make an entire substitution for the quadrilateral 2x squared minus x minus 1 because it shows up over there and it also shows up over here. Wonderful name. Right, so thus then begins the K method. You will then say let, and this has to be written down. Okay, whenever you make some sort of a substitution, you have to write down what you're doing. Okay, so let k equal 2x squared minus x minus 1. Okay, so that means that now, we instead of having that entire quadratic, we're now going to have a k and then plus a 15 divided by k plus 3. And this must equal 5. Right, now the objective for these uh, questions really is really... To get rid of the fractions okay if we can delete the fractions then it makes your job a little bit easier right now how do we get rid of a fraction we basically now going to be able to multiply throughout this entire equation by the denominator okay so we're going to multiply the k with the denominator k plus 3 then when we multiply this fraction by k plus 3, obviously the k plus 3 will cancel, leaving you with the 15, and then this will then be 5 times k plus 3. Okay, remember to multiply each and every term by your denominator. Okay, all right, now we can open up some of these brackets. So we're going to have a k times k to give us k squared, a k times 3 to give us a 3k, Right, and then we have a plus 15, and then on the other side, we're going to have a 5 times k to give us 5k, and 5 times 3 to give us a 15. Okay, 
collecting like terms here and also moving everything over so that we have a zero on one side since we have a quadratic that needs to be solved. We're going to move everything to the left hand side, right? We're going to have k squared plus 3k minus 5k plus 15 minus 15 equals zero, right? Then simplifying, we'll get k squared plus 3k minus 5k is a negative 2k. And then positive 15 minus 15 is obviously zero. Right, perfect. Now you can see you have a common factor of k in this expression now. Okay, can you see this? There's a k over here and a k over here, so we can pull out that k as a common factor in terms of factorizing, and then we'll be left in the bracket with k minus 2 equal to 0, which means that k is equal to 0 or k minus 2 is equal to 0. Okay, meaning that k is equal to 2 over here. Right, now remember we're not trying to solve for k, we are ultimately trying to solve for x. This over here is substitutions, or sorry, solutions for k. We now need to do what we call a back substitution to find the value of x, right? And we actually know what k is, so we need to just back substitute that expression over there. So let's carry on with that. So we're going off from the last step of k is equal to 0 or k is equal to 2, okay? So that's where we ended off. Now we're going to replace our k. Our k is a 2x squared minus an x minus a 1 equal to 0. And also on this side, 2x squared minus an x uh, minus a 1 equal to 2. Okay, obviously we're going to have to move that 2 back to the left hand side. And then ultimately we have to factorize 2x squared minus a x minus 3 equal to 0. Okay, so let's start on this side. Let's factorize into two brackets. Right, so factorizing this side will give us a 2x in the one bracket and the x in another bracket. Our constant term is a minus, right, or a negative number, so we have to have two different signs in our brackets, okay? Now we just quickly need to decide where the numbers need to go. Looking over here, we're working with a one, so factors of one, we have to place a one and a one somewhere. Right, but we need a negative 1, so it would help for us to get a negative 2. We'll get that like this. Okay, so this 2x times a negative 1 would be a negative 2 plus 1 is a negative 1. So we need the 2 to, sorry, the 1 to come over here and another 1 to come over there. Right, so from here, the solutions for x will be x is equal to negative a half or x is equals to 1. Right, then for this side, we do the same thing. We have a 2x, we have an x. We need two different signs since we're working with a negative 3. Factors of 3 are obviously going to be 3 and 1. Okay, now let's quickly see where the numbers need to go. Um... I think actually I'm going to have to change this up. Not a train smash, we can fix it. I am going to need a negative 3 and a positive 2 in this case to get myself to a negative 1. So my signs need to just change around, okay? So I need a positive 2, so that's going to be positive 1 here to get that positive 2. And I need a negative 3. Okay, you can quickly check that for yourself, that it works. And then lastly, to get the solutions for x, we'll get that x is 3 over 2, or x is equals to negative 1. Okay, beautiful. Now, usually what we have to do with these type of equations, uh, equations sorry, is to check that these values of x are all valid, okay? Because sometimes one of the values can make the denominator equal to zero. And if they make the denominator equal to zero, then you cannot accept them, okay? Simply based off the fact that we do not work with a fraction that has a denominator of zero, 
Okay, so now if you think about it quickly, you want to know which value of x will ever make 2x squared minus x plus 2 equal to 0. Okay, so you're trying to find out basically where does that quadratic, right, or parabola have x-intercepts, right? Easiest way to find out if a quadratic or a parabola will have uh, x-intercepts or how many x-intercepts it will have is to determine the discriminant, okay? So without having to sketch this out, we can just quickly determine the discriminant. Remember the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac, okay? So the discriminant is then, what's our b value here? It's a negative 1 squared minus 4 times 2 times another 2, okay? This is obviously going to be a negative number. I don't care what the value actually is because look over here. This is going to be 1 minus something very big. So the discriminant is less than 0, which means uh, we have non-real roots. Okay, or in other words, we have no x-intercepts. Okay, so in other words, this quadratic, right, there is no x values that make it equal to zero, which means that all of our x values that are calculated are valid. So whatever it looks like, it, it just lies above the x-axis like that, right? So... 2x squared minus x plus 2 is always greater than 0, right? Making all of these solutions valid solutions, right? Another way you could have figured this out is to take all of these solutions, okay, all four of them, plug them in there for x and make sure that they don't give you an output of zero, right? And if you take the time to do that, you will see that none of them do, okay? But I hope you then enjoyed that video. And remember, if you are maybe a grade 9 learner, grade 10 learner, even a grade 11 learner, make sure to go check out Mathematics channel as well. Very nice channel. Very, very, very rich uh, revision content that you can get there. Uh, and I'll see you guys next time.